So I was reading this recent study, which was gloriously conveyed to the public through shameless clickbait like this, although I'm not really complaining a whole lot. So, you know, that suggests that humans are better at perceiving timing mismatches in lower frequencies versus higher frequencies. Researchers found a much higher increase in something called mismatch negativity in the brains of subjects when they were presented with timing errors in lower pitched melodies versus higher pitched melodies. This confirms something that we all pretty much already know, and that's bass players need to have good rhythm and guitar players can get away with much crappier rhythm. Violin players, even more so. The question is, is how do we get good at rhythm? How do we not inadvertently trigger this mismatch negativity in others? Well, it turns out that we're already pretty good at it. In his book, Musicophilia, the world-renowned neuroscientist Oliver Sacks explains, Galileo famously exemplified how good our internal clock is in experiments timing the descent of objects as they rolled down inclined planes. Having no accurate watches or clocks to go by, he timed each trial by humming tunes to himself. And this allowed him to get results with an accuracy far beyond the timepieces of his era. It wasn't until Galileo himself invented the pendulum clock where we had the technology to keep time better than our own internal clock. I mean, I don't know about Galileo, but I certainly have really crappy rhythm. Well, you're wrong, actually. You're actually extremely good at it. Uh, no, actually. <laughs> Uh, it's something that I actually struggle with. Well, let's do an experiment, shall we? And actually, before we do that experiment, let's kind of do a meditation exercise, because it seems like you're a little bit tense. Meditation with Adam Neely. First, I'm gonna need you to take a deep breath and count backwards from 10. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. No, 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 try it a little slower. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, for, am I meditating yet? Is, is that the point of this? No, the meditation bit was just a framing device to get you to count backwards at different speeds. Counting backwards without me. Let's take a look at the audio waveform of you counting. 10, 9, When you were counting down seven, quickly, you were counting six, at a pretty five, steady 77 beats per minute. Ten, when you were counting slow, nine, it was at an equally eight, steady 68 seven, beats per six. minute. You see, language is built upon cadence, the internal rhythm of words and phrases. If I were to talk with an irregular cadence, it might sound really strange and almost un- Musical, fundamental information about what I'm saying gets lost in irregular cadences. Certain cadences are extremely regular, specifically counting. Have you ever counted unmetronomically? It doesn't matter the language, counting is always a regular phenomenon. Great, so apparently I'm amazing at rhythm. It sure doesn't feel like it. Well, let me put this into some perspective. When we musicians play music, we measure units of time. In fact, we literally call them measures. In a measure, we'll divide time into individual beats. And then from there, we might subdivide those beats into even smaller units of time. There needs to be extreme precision in how we divide the time. Otherwise, it won't sound right or feel right. This is the result of that mismatch negativity. As a species, though, we're pretty good at this, at least compared to comparable activities. You could draw an analogy to a hypothetical scenario where every couple of seconds you would be required to draw a ruler length on a piece of paper just by eyeballing it. From there, just by subdividing it, you would need to divide it into smaller subdivisions, whether they are inches or centimeters. It sounds like something pretty difficult, but it's something that musicians do all the time, just with fractions of a second versus fractions of a foot or meter. Interestingly, we're not the only species that's good at this sort of thing, and it may come down to our ability to make sounds with our mouths, our ability to make mouth sound. A 2008 study investigated Snowball, the sulfur-crested cockatoo of early YouTube fame, and by extension, the ability of non-human animals to synchronize with a beat. The study found evidence to suggest that animals that have the ability to create and imitate complex vocal sounds, like humans, dolphins, parrots, and bats, have a natural inclination to organize time and synchronize their body movements with a pulse. This study is quite fascinating because it suggests that our ability to feel time is even more fundamental than language. It stems from our our ability to vocalize. So let me just get this straight. What you're saying is that I have precise timing abilities because I can talk, apparently. Um, that's great, cool. But how do I actually like apply this to making music and make that music feel good? Well, by counting while you play. If you can count to four and make it sound natural, you'll be in good shape for this. We're gonna practice rhythm without the aid of a metronome. Scary, I know, but as Galileo proved, our own internal clock can be just as useful. We're gonna count to four as we play the bass line to Journey's Don't Stop Believin'. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four. Now, even though this might sound simple, it's actually fairly tricky to do when you're first starting out. You're gonna have to coordinate a lot between what you're saying and what you're playing. I need to map out all of the individual notes and compare them to exactly when I am saying which number. So for the first beat, one. I both play a note and I say the number one. For the up beat of one, the and of one, I don't say anything and I don't play anything. For the second two. beat, I say the number two and then I don't play anything. For the up beat of two, I don't say anything and I don't play anything. For the down beat three. of three, I say three, but I don't play anything. For the upbeat of three, I don't say anything, but I do play a note. For the downbeat of four, I both say four and I play a note. For the upbeat of four, I don't say anything and I play a note. This process is fairly long and complicated and requires you to be very meticulous in where you place everything. Who knew that practice was actually work? Oh my God. But once you have it down, what you can do is you can focus on counting to four rather than playing music. The more comfortable you are simply counting to four, the more comfortable you will be playing the actual music. Now, if you do this right, there is an auditory feedback loop that will happen because as you hear yourself say the numbers one, two, three, Four, you're gonna naturally try and adjust the music that you're making to the natural cadence that you're used to hearing. It's through this method that we can tap into the rhythmic potential of the human brain all without the aid of a metronome. What if I'm like completely hopeless? What if even this doesn't work for me? So there's this study that came out in 2011 that profiled a test subject known as Matthew, who allegedly had a fairly rare disorder. He has what the researchers call beat deafness, or the inability for him to sync his movements with music. In other words, Matthew has no rhythm, clinically speaking. Matthew could tap along with a pulse provided with a metronome pretty much just as well as a control group. Red is Matthew, blue is control. However, he utterly failed at synchronizing his movements with a popular merengue tune, Elvis Crespo's Suavemente. Very interestingly, there was no impairment found in Matthew's ability to speak language. He could talk and understand language just as well as any other person. Now, I'm not a cognitive scientist, but I am a music teacher. And based upon what we've covered so far in this video, it doesn't seem like Matthew has any sort of inherent rhythmic deficiency, but rather he just hasn't yet applied his knowledge of language to music. This could be for any number of reasons, but the power of that natural cadence of counting cannot be overstated. You know how to count already. You know how to speak your native language. Why not leverage those things to make yourself the best musician that you can be? After all, if Snowball the Cockatoo can do it, you can too. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Neely. I have a new video coming out every Monday. If you enjoy what I do, please consider joining my Patreon because it's through my patrons over at Patreon that I'm able to do this every week. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace.